then the next thing I would want to talk about is going on about team working because the person survived well with you. You've done all the assessments, you've covered everything that you could cover, you've got all of that. But there's different disciplines, and I think in the RPC family here, we're very lucky. I feel very lucky to be part of the team of people who have very, very high skills in and expertise in, in working with the survivor of brain injury. And that is very important because sometimes you may have areas in a country where the person who survives brain injury may only have maybe the GP to assess them or a social worker to assess them for maybe carers assessment and various other things and that's it or for benefit and that's that. Uh, if you're lucky you may have the psychologist to see you or social worker, speech therapist to see you and the rest. But you need all the team together because the brain doesn't just do one thing. It's from the brain that everything comes out. And if the person suffered a severe brain injury, chances are that they will have some physical problems and emotional problems and cognitive problems and different types of neurobehavioral problems. And I don't <coughs> want to go into too much detail. I mean, I only had two hours to talk to you guys today. So I, uh, I could break it all down, but no. So they've got a range of issues. So you need a lot of very skilled people to work with you to help that survivor regain as much independence as, as they could. Very, very, very important to have the right team. And also, you have to have communication skills. What we're doing, what's the plan, communicating with the service user, working with families, working with carers, working with commissioners. And working with families and service users can be very, very difficult because expectations can be quite when the person survives the brain injury, initially they may be in coma, they may be in ICU and HDU and critical care, etc. Then they come around, then they start to walk, and they start to talk. And like Phineas Gage, they sound like Phineas Gage, they walk like Phineas Gage, they look like Phineas Gage. So this person is recovered from their injury, and the doctors come in and go, yeah, this person is well enough. Oh yeah, we'll take this person home. And then it's goodbye, you take the person home because the family believes this person is recovered. So already the expectations have been set so high. So when one stands the line, the interdisciplinary team come in and they do the assessment and you say, this person's frontal lobes are so damaged that the home environment is no longer the right place for this person and that they need some sort of specialist environment for the long-term care. It becomes difficult because you're in effect, separating the person from their family. The family may have a very high expectation. So communicating, working closely with the families and getting that education and counseling and support is very, very, very important for that survivor of, of injury. And then together we work and there are different models of, of brain injury rehabilitation. But to talk about RPC and I know when Brian Sparking here, Coach Hamilton, this is, this is amazing. It's, uh, I, ca I can't wait to see who's here and spend some more time with uh, survivors and, and uh, residents and service users here. But the environment for the person who survives brain injury is very, very, very important. And I find that RPC is able to provide that enabling and safe environment because when you survive brain injury, for some survivors of brain injury, that ability to make the right decision and judgment is affected and therefore they pose risk to themselves and to others and to their own health and, and, and other risks. And therefore providing that rich, safe, supportive, adaptive environment is very, very important. And thankfully RPC is able to provide that and that's not because RPC is inviting me to to have a chat with us, but because I've, I've been lucky enough to uh, be part of the family here for the past few years and I've seen the passion that's gone into looking after the survival of, of brain injury and I wish this could be replicated around the country really, but the environment is very, very, very important for the survivor of, of brain injury. Then we're lucky to have a fantastic team here. They're skilled, they've got a lot of experience. 
I think you mentioned 30 years of, of working with survivors of brain injury. That's a lot of experience. I wish there was a way you could just bottle it and label it and <laughs> stick it in Tesco's and every, every shop to go, this is Richard. Because when you work with a survivor of brain injury, every day is a challenge. Every, it's, it's like it's unpredictable, so you have to be several steps up ahead of the person, you understand all that person's needs and you're always there to ensure that the person has the best care possible. And the skilled clinical team I find and the care team here is able to deliver that very, 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 very well. And in all of that, the service user is at the center of it all. Um, a few months ago, I was lucky to be around here and Greg, um, we had a little walk around here and in all the conversation, I was listening quite carefully and I switched my psychiatry brain on and you could see that the passion is the service user, the service user. It's not about us, it's not about the business, but it's about that person who unfortunately has survived brain injury and has got lifelong problems. And what difference can I make? What can I do to make that person's life better? And that passion, I mean, it, it touches you. You're driving back to Wilton, you're thinking, this is quite inspiring. So it's, we're lucky to have the benefit of, of, of RPC and be part of, and part of that. So the service users are the center of it all, the care, the treatment, the rehab, and every decision that, that is made.